in the studio, you've got perfect sound and you're altering everything and you think that's it. But nothing was more exciting than running out to do the car test. A lot of the first time I hear my music is sitting in my driveway with a little notebook and it solidifies the end of the session. I'm always talking about putting content into a context, which is to me what life is about creatively. The car test becomes probably the most important test of how you know the public are going to receive the music or the work that you've done. See, my father, when I was a kid, he was so consistent. He was that kind of person that was like in the center of a storm. You just knew, well, you can rely on him. When you are a young kid and your parent goes, right, every Sunday, we're gonna take the dog along the seafront and watch the waves crashing over. Then we're gonna go and get hot chocolate at this place. And they seem like small things, right? But it's these small things that, you know, burn a hole in your brain really about the importance of instilling those magic moments. So you kind of pass it on these little moments, you know? My early memories were listening to Bob Dylan with my dad. He always was just looking out for me at the end of the day, and I just happened to go into music. If I wanted to be a soccer player, if I wanted to be an accountant, it would have been the same relationship. He really is in my corner, and we get along so well, I happen to fall in love with the same thing that he did. The interesting thing with Kaya is I noticed when she was very young, she was given a, a little book, and it was called Blues Poems and I think she was about seven or eight. And my wife and I were going past her bedroom and she had it open she was singing them like an old blues lady. I was like, what? My dad had put a piano in our living room and I started writing my own songs when I was around 12 years old. And I think it drove everybody crazy because I didn't really know how to play. She really started to do this all the time. And and play strange chords on the piano and sing very oblique sort of strange melodies. And that's how I always felt was like, I don't know what I want to make because I love everything. Music chose her, you know. It was just impossible for her to go off the path. myself as a record producer. I was a songwriter too and at the beginning I first realized that I needed to learn how to produce records was the frustration of being produced by other people and in those days no musician really was allowed near the board. You played your instruments and then you sat somewhere at the back and listened but I kept wanting to put my hand up you know. My dad's my favorite person to work with it was nice to have someone who totally understood from the start why I started making music. And it was because I just loved to do it. And the best advice he's ever given me is the second you stop loving it, it's out the window. The song, If Things Go South, was really about me realizing the strength I have in myself. I've figured out things before and I'll figure it out again. I'd always dealt with anxiety, but I didn't realize until I was talking about it and the way I was coping was moving forward all the time. And COVID put things in perspective because I was sitting with myself. She'd been through a really hard time and she was suddenly trapped in a flat on her own. And um... I was diagnosed with OCD. A lot of the album is about that. And from there forward was this journey of like, all right, now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna live with this and not let this be my whole life anymore. Let's just head south. <laughs> just drive away. Away from them. Just take a right wiggle at it. She sort of started to work her way out of it with songs. And so literally what happened within about four or five days, Ten songs came blurting out. I would play the guitar and she would just sing it sitting in a chair. She never got up and sang in the mic. And 
it all came out and then she realized what she was letting out and writing. The song especially is so much about just loving yourself, even if loving yourself is not like shouting it from the rooftops, you can do anything. I think growing up, I, I always thought that song takes a lot of time and you know, you put everything you feel into it, which I do, but I always think the best songs that I write are the ones that I kind of write on accident. This one is like a, it is about a relationship. But you know what, it sounds like a very sassy song, which it is, but at the same time, it is a really vulnerable song. And that's what I we know. were talking about, about yeah. juxtaposition, no. and, you know? Exactly, because the lyrics are like, mm, are you leaving me kind of thing. Yeah. Growing up in a rock and roll, environment, I had to put a song on the record that was rock and roll because I was so inspired growing up by rock and roll music. And that was a song that first I always say more than anything, I'm a live performer. And that was the song that I was like, when I play live, I want a song that's going to get people really excited. The reason I did the honey in that like sultry voice was almost to be like, I've like made myself the least, you know, I'm so nervous and act so unattractive and all these things that I'm saying, but at the very end is almost like, honey, yeah, you honey. still like me, yeah. you know? Honey, honey, honey. I like to say it's like the worst love song ever. It's more about, I love being around you, but I also want to do my own thing. It's like a punk song that's thrashing out, but she's singing these words that are like very spelling out specific things and moments in time. After she's spat it all out, it just stops dead and she goes, honey, <laughs> you know what I mean? I love you. I love you.